Turkey and Israel used to be good friends. But in recent years, relations between the two Mediterranean countries have deteriorated. Could this falling out increase tensions in the region? Istanbul, for almost 500 years, the capital city of a great empire. From here on the Bosphorus, the Ottomans ruled much of Southeast Europe, Western Asia, and North Africa. In the Arab world, special status was granted to many cities, especially to the holy city of Jerusalem. For centuries, the Ottoman rulers were custodians of the places in Jerusalem sacred to Muslims, Christians, and Jews. The Muslim sultans welcomed into the Ottoman Empire those Jews who were driven out of Spain when it was reconquered by the Christians in 1492. This museum in Istanbul today bears testament to the place of the Jewish community in the Ottoman Empire. In 1922, the Ottoman Sultanate was formally abolished, and a year later, Turkey became a secular republic with Kemal Ataturk as its president. Turkish-Jewish relations strengthened when Turkey recognized the state of Israel in 1949, the first mainly Muslim country to do so. The relationship between Turkey and Israel developed over the next half a century. Strong military and trade ties drew the two countries ever closer together. But the geopolitics of the region is changing as Turkey rediscovers its historical ties to the Arab world. Republican Turkey basically had a new identity which said, we have nothing to do with the Middle East. We will change our alphabet and have nothing to do with the Arabs. That paradigm has failed. So Turkey is rediscovering that it is the heir of the Ottoman Empire, that it has deep historical ties of the peoples of the region. And also there is this idea that Turks used to be a central part in this narrative, and that can be reclaimed. Straddling two continents, Turkey's economy is growing. So too is its political role on the world stage. With half a million soldiers, Turkey has the second largest army of NATO, after the United States. Its relationship with Israel has been rocky of late. The Israeli consulate in Istanbul is today located in an unmarked building, a matter of security through anonymity, a sign of how this once close alliance is today on less stable ground. The way it developed was very suspicious from the start. Turkey recognized Israel in 1949 not necessarily just because it loved Israel, but because that was its entry card into the Western camp. The, the fact that Turkey was with, uh, willing to have relationship with Israel had to do with its relationship with the West and the fear of the Soviet Union. And Israel was part of the West. Turkey-Israel relations has always uh, been uh, problematic since the beginning, since the emergence of Israel. There was a concept developed by the first Israeli Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion, of a uh, kind of a 
an alliance of the periphery. He sought to develop relations with the outer perimeter of the Middle East, non Arab states, including uh, Persia at that time, uh, before the revolution, um, Ethiopia, and Turkey. Since then, relations developed uh, into a close, you could even call it strategic alliance, uh, political and but especially um, defense relations, military relations, um, very close. We had uh, joint exercise, we had uh, well-developed uh, uh, cooperation between our defense industries. Um, strategic dialogue uh, once or twice a year. I myself used to lead uh, military delegations uh, to Turkey, had many friends in the Turkish general staff. Yes, Turkish-Israeli relationship was probably late 90s, uh, when Turkey was under the thumb of generals, very secularist generals, who had a fear of Islamic fundamentalism. During the 1990s, uh, the undemocratic forces, the, the generals and the allies of the uh, armed forces in Turkey were very strong. And they, they control uh, most of the policies, especially security policies. And the Israelis established very good relations with these uh, undemocratic uh, forces in Turkey. In 2002, the Justice and Development Party, known in Turkey as the AK Party, won a landslide victory in parliamentary elections. Despite the change of leadership, initial signs were that Turkey's new rulers would seek not only to continue, but to even deepen relations with Israel. Well, when AKP came to power in Turkey 2002, it had no anti-Israeli stance. <laughs> Prime Minister Erdogan tried to improve relations with Israel. Erdogan visited Israel in 2005, visited the Holocaust Museum. He criticized anti-Semitism at home. But Turkey was not going to limit its friends. Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan also courted the Palestinian Hamas movement. Turkey took the position that any Israeli-Palestinian peace deal must include Hamas. In Tel Aviv, that was not the sort of language Israeli leaders wanted to hear. Little by little, when after the second uh, AKP elections, this was the beginning of a change because they felt strong enough to, uh, to do different things, uh, both uh, ideologically, politically and militarily. On all these levels, we started to see the change and it had also influence on Israel. The Israelis fool themselves, I think, a bit about this. I think they're being a little disingenuous. A lot of Israelis will tell you that we naturally have a wonderful relationship with Turkey and that Erdogan, the Islamist demon, broke it. Right, this is completely untrue. The idea that it was a warm relationship, I think, is belied by the fact that Turkey did not appoint an ambassador to Israel until 1992, at the point where Israel seemed as though it was wishing to make peace with the Palestinians. The 90s was a time that, you know, that Israel and Turkey was probably the closest to each other. But people forget that the 90s was an era of peace in Palestine. Any hopes of peace in the Middle East were set back by Israel's military incursion into the West Bank in 2002. There was further full-scale confrontation at the end of 2008, when Israel launched its war on Gaza.
conflict in the region exasperated Turkish efforts at mediation between the Israelis and the Arabs. The degradation of this so-called natural friendship was not Turkey's choosing. That's another myth in Israel. We never took any step in order to uh, uh, harm our relations with Turkey. We attributed the strategic importance to the relations with Turkey all along the way. We still uh, eager uh, to have strategic relations with Turkey if this was just possible. Government in Turkey have been uh, adopting a different approach to the kind of relations uh, Turkey should have with Israel. Shouldn't have been like that. And uh, had it not been taken by the Turks, we wouldn't have been in where we are today. In the first seven years of AKP rule, I mean, you can say we cannot speak of a big problem with, between AKP and Israel. Plus, actually, AKP government tried to broker a peace deal between Syria and Israel, and they came close to doing that right before the Israeli attack on Gaza. The problem for Erdogan was that they took that decision three days after he had taken the Israeli Prime Minister to dinner in his house for for, uh, and talked to him for five hours and had brought, at that point, Syria onto the other line, to another room, doing what he thought was brokering, broking the, part, the last, the last um, uh, steps towards a peace deal between Israel and Syria. But Israel decided not to tell Erdogan that there was going to be a problem on the horizon, that they were going to do Operation cast lead. Turkey's relationship with Israel is indexed to the Palestinian question. And then we have 1,400 people killed by Israeli forces in attacks on Gaza, so many of them civilians, he couldn't take it anymore. This was not a Turkish decision. This was an Israeli decision to blow that relationship out of the water. There was no other, perhaps that Israel had no choice, in which case they should have done, they should have treated Turkey differently. They took Turkey for granted and Turkey did not forget it, and especially Erdogan did not forget it. He took it very personally. So that's one decision by Israel to downgrade the relationship. Sayın Perez, benden yaşlısın. Sesin çok yüksek çıkıyor. Öldürmeye gelince siz öldürmeyi çok iyi bilirsiniz. Plajlardaki çocukları nasıl öldürdüğünüzü, nasıl vurduğunuzu çok iyi biliyorum. Ülkenizde başbakanlık yapmış olan iki kişinin önemli lafları vardır. Tankların üzerinde Filistin'e girdiğim zaman kendimi bir başka mutlu addediyorum diyen başbakanlarımız vardır. Erdogan's anger at Israel was taken up by the Turkish film industry. A Turkish TV series telling the story of a Palestinian family became a big hit when it began its run in October 2009. Scenes showing Israeli soldiers targeting Palestinian children angered Israel. One scene proved particularly controversial. Ah! Israelis are astonished with what they see from Turkey, the, the kind of uh, language taken by uh, Turkish leadership when they deal with Israel is really hard to accept in Israel. And, uh, and uh, first of all, we know it's untrue. <laughs> it's extremely difficult for the Israelis to understand what's going on. Israelis tend to sometimes think that whatever they do to the Palestinians has nothing to do with, with how the rest of the world uh, uh, looks at them. That is not the case, uh, especially in Turkey. Uh, 
So it would be wrong to think that, oh, if the generals had remained in power in Turkey, which would be totally undemocratic and wrong for many reasons, but from the Israel, even from the Israeli point of view, if they think that things would be very different today, they would, they would be, I think, mistaken. Uh, no government in Turkey would have uh, stood uh, silent uh, in the face of uh, the war crimes in Gaza. In January 2010, Israeli officials decided on a TV spectacle of their own, further straining relations between Ankara and Tel Aviv. The deputy uh, Israeli foreign minister deliberately insults the Turkish ambassador in front of cameras, makes him sit on a lower chair, points it out to the TV, and, and basically makes humiliating comments. Okay, Israel unusually apologizes, but still, an Israeli decision to escalate the situation. Israel, I think, abused Turkish friendship, uh, and the Turkey did not accept uh, such an attitude. Compared with the, I think, uh, Arab neighbors of Israel, Turkey is a, more, a stronger country. So Israel cannot impose anything to such a, a strong country. The relationship between Turkey and Israel was to become even more bitter. On May 31, 2010, a flotilla of boats carrying humanitarian aid to Gaza was intercepted by the Israeli Navy. We are internationals, we are civilians, legally sailing in the international waters. The flotilla's lead vessel was the Mavi Marmara, a Turkish ferry carrying more than 600 people. The Israelis decided to attack the lead boat of that flotilla in international waters at a time it was steaming southwards towards Egypt. It wasn't going towards Gaza at that point. It was going south to Egypt. It, and they chose to do it in a manner which, if they had thought about it, was bound to cause a lot of trouble. Before they came to the boat, they have started to use their weapons. Not only uh, weapons, as I say, the bombs and everything. Without any warning, they have directly used the guns. Directly. <laughs> Nine people killed, and not just that. If you read the, the reports about what happened afterwards, the, the extraordinary ill treatment of everybody on those ships in Israel, okay, whatever happened on board, you still have two days later, people, including many Turks, being beaten into a pulp on the ground in Ben Gurion airport by uniformed Israeli uh, officials and security people. Some of them had to be hospitalized. This is not a Turkish decision. This was Israeli actions. We asked them not to let this ship come. That's why we said we are not going to apologize for something that we didn't initiate. And we were forced and we were put deliberately in this position. We had never ever think that they can do something like this. Of course, they have capacity to stop the boat with different ways, not like this. Take beer! Take beer! Take beer! The Turkish society had been changed by the Israeli peoples after Mavi Marma. The first time in Turkish Republic history, first time all colors of the Turkey have agreed to be against to Israel. The leftists, rightists, nationalists, separatists, whatever they. Such a barbarity cannot be 
accepted by any civilian civic country. Problem is the Israel. Turkey, even after the Marmara Fair, tried to find peaceful solutions and asked Israeli government apology and compensation. They did not accept their sin and they did not accept to pay anything to the victims' families. If they continue in this way, uh, Turkey-Israel relations cannot be set on friendly uh, base. They behave like terrorist organization. With Turkish-Israeli relations at an all-time low following the naval raid on the Gaza-bound flotilla, Israeli Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman weighed in with a harsh warning. Israel began courting other Mediterranean neighbors. What has added a new element to the geopolitics in the region has been the recent discovery of large reserves of gas and oil beneath the eastern Mediterranean. You can see that Israel is teaming up with Cyprus to a great deal in the East Mediterranean gas story. There's now an Israel Cyprus, Greece power line being studied, probably be laid by 2016. You see diplomatic maneuvers between those three countries and um, you also see uh, defense pacts between those countries. Now that to Turkey is obviously hostile. Large gas fields have been discovered approximately 80 kilometers off Israel's coast. The find has triggered a new geopolitical conflict as Lebanon claims part of the gas field lies in Lebanese territorial waters. But it's the island of Cyprus which has become a new tension spot between Israel and Turkey. Turkey has been angered by an agreement the Cypriot government has signed with Israel, dividing exploration rights in the region. Cyprus has been split between Greek and Turkish zones since Turkey invaded in 1974 and seized the northern third of the island. With Israel courting the Greek Cypriots, Turkey has renewed its campaign on behalf of Turkish Cypriots. The gas bonanza in the eastern Mediterranean risks further stirring political tensions in the region, and Cyprus is at the very epicenter. The island of Cyprus has become a new tension spot between Israel and Turkey. The discovery of natural gas in the exclusive economic uh, zone of Cyprus has given hope to people and it has rightly given hope to people. It's just that the uh, major impact of these discoveries in terms of financial uh, growth will come mostly in the medium and long term rather than immediately, though uh, I do say that already we are experiencing an enhanced interest on behalf of investors who are visiting the island to position themselves as here as of day one. The offshore gas in the eastern Mediterranean for Israel uh, and also I think to some extent for Cyprus and Lebanon is a game changer. These are three countries um, which do not have their own energy resources and have always been dependent on um, importing energy. Israel and Cyprus will start benefiting from this cooperation between them, probably cemented or at least advanced uh, in the recent uh, historic visit of Netanyahu to Cyprus. It's, the, it's amazing that it's the first um, visit of an Israeli prime minister to Cyprus ever. I think that the benefit for Cyprus and Israel would start 
will be apparent within three to five years. The discovery of natural gas in our area opens new opportunities, but not only in terms of uh, e economic growth, I would say it also offers an opportunity um, for countries that have political problems between them in this re region to decide and resolve the problems of the past so that they can all uh, cooperate peacefully afterwards to capitalize on these opportunities so that relations between the whole of Cyprus and Turkey can normalize and so that Cyprus and Turkey can cooperate as partners in peace even in the energy sector. And I think that the finding of natural gas is making uh, this jingoistic um, um, mood that Netanyahu is in vis-à-vis -vis Iran um, and more feasible for them, for, for, for Netanyahu. So this is a, a huge uh, political tool for, um, for Israel generally, but for the current government in particular. Uh, you might look at a situation within, uh, in, which, in which within five or ten years, uh, the majority of cars in Israel will be electric taking their electricity from an electricity grid that is powered mainly by gas and therefore cutting down very, very significantly on the need of Israel to import oil. In terms of Turkey and Cyprus and Israel, clearly the, the, uh, the partnership with Cyprus is now here to stay because the Noble Energy, the Texas uh, oil company that is doing the work in Israel and in Cyprus is partly Israeli owned. I had visited Israel where I had the opportunity to meet with four ministers of the government as well as with the uh, office of the prime minister where we exchange views as to how we could promote cooperation between Cyprus and Israel, um, both in energy but in other sectors of the economy, such as, let's say, tourism. Cyprus must find a way and Turkey must also find a way within the next few months to start talking about a possible pipeline from Cyprus to Turkey for the onward sale of that gas, because that is probably the most economic route. Turkey has limited energy sources of its own, but it is adjacent to some of the world's largest gas suppliers. It is positioning itself as a key transit hub for Russian and Central Asian gas supplies to Europe. At the same time, Turkey has launched its own exploration in and around Cyprus. Any major discoveries it makes may well fuel a simmering crisis. In September 2011, Turkish media reported Israeli F-15 fighter jets buzzed over a Turkish ship exploring for natural gas reserves near Cyprus. According to the reports, Turkey sent two F-16 jets to track the Israeli planes which subsequently returned to Israel. The areas where we uh, are going to produce uh, gas have nothing to do with Turkey. Uh, and yes, and, uh, we, we look very much forward to, to, be, to being less dependent on uh, imports and hopefully turn into exporters the question of who has the right to tap deposits in the region is raising the political stakes.
So there is a growing sense of like, well, what will happen in the East Mediterranean is important for us, and we should have a say about that. Because Turkey now is also seeing this as a matter of political power in the Eastern Mediterranean. partners, it, not only uh, Cyprus, also uh, Romania and Bulgaria. And Israel is trying to find um, new relationships so in order to, to try and compensate for the, the you know, uh, the relationship, uh, bad relationship with Turkey. They try to make surround to Turkey. They are making, as you say, the relation with the Cyprus relation with the Greece, relation with Azerbaijan. Turkey is suspicious of Israeli moves to strengthen relations with Cyprus, as well as with Romania, Bulgaria, and with Azerbaijan to the east of Turkey. You can even say that Israel is uh, competing a bit with Turkey and Azerbaijan, for instance, where Israel has made big arms sales against the clearly um, the, the clear wish of Turkey, I don't think it was openly expressed, but I think Turkey's uncomfortable seeing that its big ethnic cousin and friend being so clearly aligned with, with, with Israel. Israeli arms sales to Azerbaijan, worth billions of dollars, have made headlines both at home and abroad. Turkey is concerned about this growing relationship and what it may mean for the region, especially given that Azerbaijan is strategically located on Iran's northern border. Uh, there is an arms race in that region and Israel is contributing to that arms race, uh, both politically and materially. Israel's new opening into the Caucasus region on Turkey's eastern border also encompasses the Armenians. Israel is uh, playing a double game because uh, it has double opportunities uh, in the region. One is uh, a recent standoff with Turkey, uh, where Turkey is vulnerable on the Armenian genocide issue. And then uh, there is Iran, and the war rhetoric is uh, sounding louder and louder recently. Even Azerbaijan is uh, actively participating because it has an ax to grind with Iran. So should Iran fall apart, uh, they think uh, the fallout will benefit uh, Azerbaijan. They will take over the no northern Iran, northern uh, Azerbaijan, which has a bigger territory than the actual territory of the Republic of Azerbaijan. They may never get to what they wanted, but they will be used in the process by Israel and United States to dismantle, to bring down the Iranian regime. The present uh, coalition of Israeli government have some very uh, rightist ex uh, extremist groups, including Avigdor Lieberman, uh, who is the foreign minister, who was the spokesman uh, even stronger than Netanyahu himself, uh, uh, rebuking Turkey. And uh, he said that he was going to uh, come to visit the United States, meet with, meet with Armenian leaders, uh, and try to pass the Armenian Genocide Resolution in the Congress. One of the reasons that Turkey valued its relationship with Israel so much until very recently is that Turkey relied on pro-Israeli lobby support in the West, particularly Washington, but it may be even in, even in France, on the issue of Armenian genocide. And it has supported Turkey on, on this particular issue. So that was important for Turkey. Israeli lawmakers recently discussed in parliament whether to commemorate the Armenian genocide. 
No decision has been made, but this controversial issue could further aggravate the already strained relations with Turkey. The government has made it a point not to do anything about the Armenian issue. In spite of the pressure from the Armenian community, it's the foreign ministry and they, you know, stand on both their legs to stop anything which might bring Israel to, to, to deny, to, I mean, to accept this idea of uh, uh, genocide of the Armenians. So on this point, this for sure, until now at least, all the governments were for uh, supporting Turkey on this point, the Turkish government on this point. And um, maybe, you know, the Jewish lobby in, in the United States is not working so hard and is, as it had done in the past in supporting Turkey's move. Many Turks uh, also w have the concern that if, this, if the ethnic cleansing of Armenians is defined internationally, legally, as genocide, this will lead to some political consequences. Turkey will need to pay like war reparations. Maybe Armenia will demand some land from Turkey, some cities in the east. Armenia says about 1.5 million Armenians were killed during World War I in a deliberate policy of genocide ordered by the Ottoman government. Turkey rejects the genocide claims. The issue has now become part of the Turkish-Israel fallout. The same thing, Israel is using the Armenian genocide uh, as a political issue. Uh, unfortunately, this is the nature of uh, politics. Israel Devlet Başkanı Sayın Shimon Peres'i kürsüye davet ediyorum. And uh, Mr. Shimon Peres, when he went to Ankara a couple of years ago, uh, he had the nerve to stand up and say that the Armenian atrocities or Armenian massacre do not amount to genocide. In December 2011, Israel canceled a multi-million dollar contract to supply Turkey with an advanced aerial intelligence system. Months earlier, Turkey had frozen 16 arms deals with Israel, including a $5 billion contract for 1,000 Merkava tanks. The cancelled deals reflect a profound reassessment of strategic ties between the two countries. Um, almost all of our previous cooperation stopped, there's no military cooperation whatsoever, no exercise, no strategic dialogue, it all stopped, uh, a lot of political tension. The unravelling of military links between the two countries has underlined the seriousness of the current confrontation. Turkey had been Israel's biggest trading partner in the region. Some Israeli economists have warned of the costly damage to Israeli exports of the ongoing diplomatic feud with Turkey. Yet trade between Turkey and Israel in the non-military and defense sectors actually increased in both 2010 and 2011. One thing that is very pragmatic about the AKP is that it's a very trade-oriented government. And Erdogan would never do something which will, uh, which will overshadow the, the interests of Turkish, Turkish merchants and investors and, 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 and companies. So uh, with regards to Israel too, I mean, I think the Turkish government would not ever try to, try to, uh, to curtail trade between Israel and, and, and Turkey. That's something different from governmental relations. The private and governmental trade between the countries, it lasts for at least 40 years. 2011 was on one of the good years, which uh, this uh, volume reached over $4 billion. Israel normally is exporting more to the world and uh, importing less, with Turkey is the opposite. In recent years, Israel has built factories in Turkey and is manufacturing goods there. 
The orders are coming to Turkey. Turkey is producing it in a joint venture between Turkey and Israelis. And the goods are exported by Turkey as made in Turkey. But when you invest in a country, you are there for good. You are there for a long time. Turkey's $30 billion annual trade with the Arab world and Iran dwarfs its trade with Israel. Even so, Turkish-Israel trade marked a 30% increase in 2011. From Turkey, Israel buys appliances, machinery, and manufactured goods, among other things. From Israel, Turkey buys agriculture products such as drip irrigation and computer chips. The Masafi family came to Israel many years ago from Iraq. They have been importing goods from Turkey since 1959. For them, trade with Turkey has not been affected by the political conflict. From Turkey, especially, we buy uh, hazelnuts, uh, figs and apricots, sometimes cherries. Uh, sometimes pistachios. People in Israel think that all the dried fruits come from Turkey. A lot of people were very angry with Turkey. Uh, it's like in the newspaper, the, all the, the press, everything, the television, all, everybody said that there are no relations with Turkey, Turkey doesn't want relations with Israel, and if Turkey doesn't want, then Israel doesn't want. Some trade may have been unaffected. But the freeze in relations has hit the once thriving tourism industry between Turkey and Israel. In 2008, some 500,000 Israelis visited Turkey. By 2011, that number had gone down to 75,000. I think there is no policy about this, but on the public level, if there is an Israeli hummus in Turkish markets and written in Hebrew, I think it won't sell too much. And people on Twitter would say, let's not buy this because the money for this goes for the bullets that kill people in Gaza. Uh, so I, I think that sentiment is there. But maybe some of the products they're buying are Israeli, maybe they don't notice that. Uh, but if it is noticeable, I don't think it will be good for the sales of that company. A new shift of power appears to be taking place on the shores of the Mediterranean as Turkey's international influence increases. Israel has long been the regional heavyweight, but some of its actions have aroused deep anger within Turkey. Both countries are important allies of the United States, but they have become engaged in a diplomatic and geopolitical rivalry, with each side asserting its influence and seeking to outmaneuver the other in the region. Competition over recently discovered gas resources risks fueling this rivalry in the eastern Mediterranean.